The longsword truly is the most iconic medieval sword in the world, and it has become the symbol for chivalry, justice, knighthood, valour, and nobility. And men were allowed to carry this sword not only for self-defence, but to proclaim to the world that they held the ideals that this sword represented dear to their hearts. But not anymore. But never fear, because there is a way that one can bear the long sword as in times of old. Not exactly in times of old, but good enough and you wouldn't be breaking the law. Presenting the long sword shirt with royal coat of arm style mantling, the long sword sits front and centre in the majesty that it rightly deserves. As always, available through Teespring, link in the description. Shadowverse. Ratings, I'm Shad, and the swords next to me here show the clear kind of progression in the standard terminology or definitions that we use to describe European style swords, specifically the cruciform style swords. So I'm sorry, you know, messes and falchions, you know, included in this. And I have arrayed them behind me here. Now, just to show you something, they, they look really small behind me, but that's the perspective of the camera. So if you, if you want, see this, they, Swords are a lot, wow, my chair looks huge. It looks like that was built for a giant. But anyway, so, so the swords, okay, uh, that's just a perspective thing. Now, why do I have these swords arrayed here? Because aren't I supposed to be talking about the long sword and bastard sword as evident by the title of this video? Well, this is, you know, exactly, this is very important for this discussion because according to the historical definitions, each one of these swords was identified as either a long sword or a bastard sword in history. Before I go into that, because I'm not here to tell you that you should use these scroll to the historical definitions because they're really confusing. Uh, that, that's the whole issue about it. In the modern day, we have a standard uh, terminology, which I really like, okay, because it, it creates uh, the ability to be understood so much more. Uh, and uh, this is the important thing. For the purpose of language, it achieves exactly what we need. When I say longsword, people know what sword I'm referring to out of all these here. Whereas historically, depending on where you come from, no. So I'm not making this video to replace the modern terminology, even though his by historical definitions, it's largely incorrect. But I'm making this video to share with you what those definitions were so you can be more educated and know more about swords and stuff because swords are cool, specific, especially long swords and bastard swords. But I will just mention what the historical definitions are. So going, you know, from here to here, uh, that, that it's, it would be your left to my, to your left to your right, my right to your, my right to my left. Anyway, going up, you we would have Arming sword, bastard sword, long sword, war sword, and great sword. Bang, 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 bang. Did I do one extra bang? Oh well. You get more bang for your buck! <laughs> now, technically, we used bastard sword and war sword as subclassifications of long sword. So the three in the middle uh, can also just as easily be cast and considered long swords as well. And that's perfectly fine. Not, a, not an issue with that. So I, I have no problem if someone called the war sword a long sword or the bastard sword a long sword because long sword is a bit more of an umbrella term. This is the interesting thing though. Historically, what was a long sword? Well, it depends what language you spoke and where you came from. Uh, long sword, the, well, the biggest issue with long sword is that it's a descriptive term and that's where it was, well, like most likely, where it was first used. This sword is longer than, you know, other types. So I'll just call it the long sword. Gra go grab that long one over there. And so by this definition, the uh, arming sword, the smallest one on the scale, could it very much, in, in fact, I believe there even was, case where it was, it was called a long sword because it was much longer to earlier period swords, like say the gladius, which actually means every single one of those swords actually were called a long sword at some point throughout history, because uh, the long sword most definitely was, so the middle one, right, uh, that was called the Langschwert uh, in Germany, which translates to long sword. Amazing! But in English, the actual term or definition of long sword was used far less. I've even, you know, read claims that it was barely used at all. And when it was used, the actual term long sword, it was used to refer to what we would understand as a rapier. I know, right? What was the term rapier then used for? <laughs> rapier, historically, was a term used to, to refer to a so what we would call a side sword, a cut and thrust sword, similar to the rapier, just with a broader blade. But there you go, long sword in English, 
sometimes, it wasn't a big term, but sometimes it was used to refer to a rapier. What were the other terms for uh, the longsword in the English language? Most likely two-handed sword, but bastard sword is one that comes up as well. Like Historically, bastard sword is an interesting one because bastard sword, uh, uh, historically, in the historical time, it can actually be used to refer to, again, all of these swords because it's according to how the term bastard sword was used. People think bastard sword means hand and a half sword. Hand and a half sword is a more modern term. But bastard sword was used in two contexts, okay? And one did kind of mean a hand and a half sword, but more it was like it was a sword that could be used e in one hand as easily as in two, so it was kind of bridging the gap between a one-handed sword and a true two-handed sword, which is where you see what we would call a bastard sword right there. Same blade length as a one-handed arming sword, but handle length long enough to accommodate two hands. But there's another definition of bastard sword where uh, this term can apply to all of these swords in a historical context. And that is a sword with unknown origins, like the term bastard. Its parentage is questionable. And so in this context, this could refer to a sword that uh, you didn't know where it was made or who made it. It's a bastard. It's a bastard sword. So uh, that can refer to any one of those swords. Uh, now, was it actually used to refer to, uh, uh, you know, what we would call a great sword, the big sucker on the end? No, I don't think it was used historically in context in that way, but by the definition of this context, you could apply it to a great sword that you didn't know who, what, who made it or where it came from. It does seem bastard sword was used uh, in the English language, and perhaps this is because uh, the, the English-French connection, there, there is so much cross-pollination in terms of names and, and culture, and I think especially if you go back Far enough. But translating bastard sword into French, the French actually used that term and it was epi de, ba de epi batarde. I'm horrible with French pronunciation. You guys will know what I mean. But that was actually used in the period to refer to the swords that I mentioned. It could either be just a flat out long sword, uh, so a sword that was, you know, two-handed, or a sword that was just irregular. So sorry, this is another de definition as well that I failed to mention. So if you had a one-handed sword that had an uh, like an overly long blade that you wouldn't usually find on a one-handed sword, but everything else was the same, hilt was all the same, it was irregular, it was strange, and so it would also be called an epée de batarde, or batarde, or batarde. <laughs> French is weird. When swords got even bigger, okay, so when we uh, step it up from the size of your standard long sword, well, also, they were called long swords. See, this is the thing. And so the long sword that we would call a long sword would be called a bastard sword. And then the true long sword was a great sword. And that, that, it could very much have been the war sword equivalent length of great sword or the great sword equivalent length of great sword because great sword was also a spectrum that had variants as well. And so you had great swords that were called great swords that were the size of what we would call a war sword. <laughs> you see where this is going. Hopefully what you'll ultimately get out of this video is an understanding that uh, the differences in swords are actually, they don't come down to specific measurements that, uh, you know, a sword has to be of this specific size and this specific style to be a long sword. No, what swords are, they exist on a spectrum. So even the differences that we see here, okay, you will find historical examples of swords that bridge the gap in between the examples that are right there. And so what do you call a sword that sits exactly in the middle between an arming sword and a bastard sword or a bastard sword and a long sword, a long sword and a war sword or a war sword and a great sword. So ultimately the purpose of classification will be uh, failed. It can't achieve perfectly what you're after because swords do not uniformly conform to strict sizes like this. But it's still good to have definition so language can still be better understood. So I'm not saying get rid of it but I am sharing with you the inherent issues with it that exist. And so with everything that I said uh, when you're talking from you know one person to another Disregard it. <laughs> uh, I'm, sh I'm sharing with you so you can learn more about the things that we enjoy, swords, but don't, you know, adopt these actual terms. Stick with the current definitions, okay? Arming sword, bastard sword, long sword, war sword, great sword. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, farewell.